Merci. Hello, this is Michael Ewer, and I'd like to invite you to the Michael Ewer Show, featuring student hosts and very special guests talking about a variety of interesting topics. You can find us on the Eagle Stream YouTube channel. Good afternoon. Welcome to the Michael Your Show. Our very special guest today is Dr. Michael Beck or Mike Beck. From uh, He's the Dean of Arts, Humanities and Social Sciences at Wake Tech. But before we start, I want everyone to briefly introduce themselves and we can start with Jerry and then we'll do Cameron and then David. And finally, Dr. Beck, you can just if you want. Jerry. Hi, my name is Jerry Green. I'm majoring in cybersecurity here at Wake Tech. This is my second year. I've been participating in these virtual mixers as a student success outreach ambassador. Cameron. Uh, currently, this is my um, about to be my second year at Wake Tech. Uh, I enrolled in 2020 and I'm planning on majoring in computer science. David. Uh, yes, my name is David Kwong. Uh, I'm was a former student success coach student uh, on, with Michael Ura. Uh, I am currently a NC State student uh, and in the fall I'm going to start my master's degree in aerospace engineering. All right, and Dr. Beck, we can uh, get to you, but you can say hello at least. Oh, th hey, Michael, I'd like to say uh, thanks for having me on your show. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, Jerry, Cameron, David, thank you for your time and looking forward to uh, to the conversation. Okay, so we're going to start with questions. And uh, the first question, David Kwan, since this is your first time, you can ask, okay? I believe your mic is muted, David. Sorry. Uh, first question, uh, Dr. Beck, uh, is if you could tell us a little bit about yourself, introduce uh, yourself to the audience. Sure. Well, again, yeah, I'm Michael Beck. Uh, most folks just call me Mike. I mm -hmm. currently work um, here at Wake Tech as the Dean of Arts, Humanities, and Social Sciences. And um, I've been at the college now for um, a little over a year. And I uh, love the job, love the college, um, love the people, great faculty, staff, students. So um, that's uh, the role that I um, am in currently now at the college and just uh, couldn't ask for a better, a, a better position. Um, a, little bit about, a little bit about me personally, I was uh, born in North Carolina and um, born in Lumberton, North Carolina and um, moved up toward um, uh, the Wake County area. Um, when with my parents and family when I was around, I don't know, three or four and have been in this area pretty much my entire life. Um, I've lived in a couple of other states. I uh, lived in South Carolina and Louisiana, um, but I found my way back here and now I reside in Wake County um, with my wife and our three kids who are 10, 6, and 3. So we're busy. Um, uh, it's like the day, uh, the kid, the, I don't know, you know, if you have kids that uh, they definitely keep you busy and keep you on your toes. So, um, so that's a little bit about me personally. I've also worked in education for, uh, for going on right at 15 years, over 15 years now. So I love education. I have a passion for helping students and um, helping students uh, reach their goals. And that's the beauty of working at a community college is really just helping students meet their academic and their personal goals in life. So um, yeah, that's just kind of uh, a little bit about me and, and two, three, uh, to three minutes. We're going to find out a lot more as we go on. So uh, <laughs> the next question, I guess we'll give that one to you, uh, Jerry. Actually, this question is going to be kind of interesting because I went to school in Fayetteville myself. Um, what made you decide to attend Fayetteville State University and major in history? Yeah, so that's a great question. Um, right out of high school, I attended community college for about a year um, and was honestly not sure exactly what I wanted to do. And 
I knew that I came from a family of educators and nursing or, or nurses. So I figured I'm either going to end up in nursing or education. And um, I knew that I loved history, uh, studying history. Um, my mom worked in education for years and I thought I'd give education a try. So um, really at that time, I had a lot of friends in Fedville and um, spent a lot of time in Fedville. Um, I was living at that time in Sanford and Fedville State was uh, only 30 minutes from where I resided and uh, actually spoke with a friend and she said, uh, hey, have you thought about, you know, looking into Fedville State? It's a great opportunity, a great school. And looked into it, I applied, was accepted, and um, and the rest is history. Um, so uh, Fevel State was just a, a great choice for me. It was it was local, it was close, it was a smaller school. Um, I just, uh, I didn't think I was ready to, to attend a university or a college that had 40 or 50,000 students. At that time, I think Fevel State had about 4,000 students. So it was a good size for me, a good fit. Um, I was a commuter. So, um, yeah, it just it just felt natural. It was a really good fit, and I really I really enjoyed um, uh, my time there, uh, working on my my undergrad degree, and loved it so much. I ended up deciding uh, to finish my um, master's in history there as well. So um, it, it was a great opportunity, a great experience. Um, but yeah, it really comes down to just kind of being at the right place at the right time, and um, having a passion for history. Um, and, and, you know, the kind of the great thing about studying history uh, or what I enjoy about studying history is that it kind of it increases cultural literacy. Um, it allows, you know, others to study the experiences of people in times and places other than their own. And um, for me, it, it allowed me to develop the ability to read insightfully, um, to think critically and really learn how to write well. So and I feel like Fevel State um, gave me the opportunity to excel in all of those areas. Again, as I mentioned, I earned a Bachelor of Arts in History. I got my Master's in History uh, from Fayetteville State as well. And I also had the opportunity while working on my Master's in History to complete a um, teaching certification pro program. I believe it was called NC Teach at that time. But uh, what really just kind of won me over at Fayetteville State was, um, was the resources, their personnel, their the faculty staff, the students, but really most importantly for me was the fantastic faculty that I worked with within the Department of History and um, still speak and talk with a lot of faculty members or professors who were professors at that time, um, my professors, and still speak with them occasionally and work with them through partnerships uh, here at Wake Tech. And I've worked with them um, through like articulation agreements and um, uh, degree bridge programs, those types of things. So I still talk with a lot of professors, former professors, um, periodically, um, even uh, throughout um, as early as last academic year. And uh, it's just a, it was a great uh, experience. So uh, yeah, history is great. Fevel State was a great institution to attend. I recommend to anyone who's kind of on the fence about where they would like to attend, I think they should consider Federal State. And I'll throw a plug out there for the history program, which really worked out well for me. Thank you. And we're going to talk some more, but right now we do have a couple of comments. So mm -hmm. I'm going to ask Cameron to do, could you read this comment from Josie George? Good afternoon, all. Welcome back, Dean Beck. And this, uh, I'm going to let that be your job today is read these. <laughs> so uh, this is Dr. Chris O'Riordan Aja. Cameron. Yeah. Thanks for sharing, Dr. Uh, thanks for sharing, Dr. Beck. Very important for students to understand that we all have and had our challenges when picking majors and fitting, finding our fits. And, and that is so true. And I was all on the fence on whether I wanted to share this story or not. But when I first attended Federal State, I remember during registration, uh, they, they kind of brought us all, all freshmen into one I think it was the Helen Chick building, if I'm not mistaken, maybe I'm wrong about that, but they brought us into one building and they had these little cards and they said on the card, write the major that you want and, um, and then find the advisor and we'll get you scheduled. So I, I wanted to major in history and I was like, well, you know what? I've always loved music. And um, I ended up writing, I want to be a music major. So I went, <laughs> went and spoke to an, a faculty advisor and she said, Michael, do you sing? I said, no, I don't because they had vocals and I think it was like, uh, and she said, do you play the piano? I said, no, I don't. 
she said, well, Michael, you do not want to be a music major. If you, if you don't have any ta musical talents, you, you, you don't want to go that route. I said, well, I'll be a history major. So that's, so yes, it's, it's a difficult process. And, you know, I, I laugh at that and think, you know, I could have been a music major except for the fact that I have no musical talent. Um, so, you know, I thought I'd give it a shot, but uh, history is, is the select, it was the chosen path. And, um, you know, I think a lot of our students go through the same conversations. They want to be doctors and lawyers and uh, nurses or um, history majors. You just don't know. And that can change. Um, but it's always great to have those conversations, those important, crucial conversations with your advisors early on to make sure that you get in the right degree program that not only meets your um, your, your personal, um, you know, traits or uh, desires, but also you find a field that will bring happiness, joy, and success long-term, right? So um, you think about money and issues like that, but when it really comes down to it, my initial advice is find a major that, that will make you happy and find a career path that will make you happy. So that's, that's my advice, but yeah, good point. All right. Well, thank you for giving us the opportunity to do a segue. We're going to do a couple of slides from the African American Latino Mixer, which you attended and involves music. So thank you, um, Sarah. We're going to go to the next slide. And that is Dr. Chris O'Riordan Aja, who is uh, the head of engineering at Wake Tech. And he played the djembe drums. What do you think about that, um, Michael? Well, I can, I'm going to let's go a few and then you can talk about all the musicians. Okay. And then, and this is a student in the bilingual early childhood program, and she played violin. She is awesome. she really did well. And then we'll go to the next one. And this is Obelia Exum, and she is um, the creative director at the North Carolina Museum of History. And actually, she got her bachelor. She went to Wayne Community College, got an associate degree, transferred to a &T, and got her bachelor's in art. And then she got her master's in design at NC State. So I like when we have success stories that even though I didn't help her become successful, to show students how you can go to a community college and excel, just as David has done and just as she did. So we're, just, we're gonna finish that. We're finished with the slides for now, but we want to get your uh, thoughts about those. Mike. Well, it was a wonderful event. And, and as I mentioned, I love music. Um, um, I don't know, if, maybe I'm a little jealous that, <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't get up there and perform, but uh, I say that, uh, just joking when I say that, but you know, it, I would love to be able to play an instrument. I've tried to play uh, the guitar. I've tried to play drums. I've tried, you name it, and just uh, just can't. Uh, I don't know if I just don't have the, I don't know the talent, and not everyone has it. But I will say this: that I really enjoyed the performers that night. Um, um, it, it was amazing. I, I really and I just just a personal um, note here. I really love jazz. I mean, I've just got a passion for jazz and. You know, hearing hearing the bands play and and the individuals perform, it was it was really amazing. But the, you know, um, the street genie was there, you know, and uh, the the jazz band. And what I like about jazz is in improvisation, right? You just kind of play, and it just progresses and develops as as you go along. And I really appreciate that that spontaneous innovation of just like solo lines and a and just uh, I don't know, it's just pretty amazing. And um, and again, that kind of goes back to my to my my education is. Um, my senior project was on uh, jazz, and it was based on a book by a Professor Thomas Hen Dr. Thomas Hennessy called From Jazz to Swing. And uh, so just anything to do with, with jazz and improvisation or just listening to music from different cultures, and um, I, I love it. It just gets my, you know, kind of, as you can see in the pictures, I was sitting <laughs> in most of those pictures, and it's was pretty engaged. And I really enjoyed it. So um, that was definitely a fun event. And I look forward to to the next one, and um, the, the food was pretty amazing as well. So, well, I'm glad you said it because we're going to try to see if we can't find a way to collaborate to do something like that bigger because you have all those departments. So now we're going to start going back to some questions, and whose turn is it now? Let's start again with you, David. And for the audience, please ask your questions in the chat because we're almost halfway through. Time goes by really quick. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Dr. Beck, um, you mentioned during your introduction that you've been uh, different positions, you've been a history instructor, dean for uh, students in a community different community colleges. Could you tell us a little bit about your experience as a educator and also as a um, administrator at various institutions? 
in your career? Sure. So um, my career in education started at the middle school level. <clears throat> I taught middle school for uh, four or five years, taught eighth grade. Um, I taught language arts and history um, during those, and, the, and middle school is a blast. It, it really is. The, the kids will keep you young and they'll keep you on your toes and they'll, <laughs> it was a lot of fun. Um, it, it really was. And then after, after my um, uh, tenure in, in middle school, I taught um, history at a community college in Albemarle, North Carolina, Stanley Community College, and worked there for quite a few years. And uh, had the opportunity to uh, serve as the Dean of Student Learning at another North Carolina community college, worked there for three years. And uh, more recently, I, was, I served as the Associate Vice President of Instruction at a community college in upstate South Carolina. I uh, had the opportunity to work with transfer programs and career and technical programs, um, which was an amazing experience. We worked with uh, key industry partners such as BMW, Michelin, and um, a lot of a lot of really uh, cool programs there at that institution, Megatronics, where you get to work with robots and um, you know welding and those types of things as well. So that was a really great experience. And uh, before um, the move to Wake Tech, I worked in Louisiana at a community college right outside of Baton Rouge, where I served as the vice chancellor of academic affairs, and again worked with all academic programs, uh, career, technical, um, transfer. And a lot of cool programs out there too. We worked a lot with what we call like um, process technicians, where we worked with industry partners such as Shell and Marathon. And we worked at, we got to visit all these refineries and these local industries where um, we were training students to, to be a part of transfer, uh, transferred institutions, universities such as uh, Louisiana uh, or LSU, Louisiana State University, or go and work in the refineries or work on the Mississippi River on. Um, ships and boats and things of that nature. So it was, it was a lot of fun. I mean, I've really enjoyed my experience, you know, everything from middle school to working with um, community and business partners. It's really been a blast and, and I wouldn't trade my experiences for the world. And fortunately, Wake Tech gave me the opportunity to come back home and, and work at a, a fantastic college that is a, really a, a leader in the nation among all community colleges. And I'm in a position now where I'm able to work with transfer programs, which I love, um, and with excellent students, faculty, and staff every single day. So um, I, I've really enjoyed the opportunity to move to a, to a couple of additional states to work within a couple of additional community college systems and kind of compare them to the North Carolina system and been able to glean best practices from all three systems. So it's really been a blast. And um, and I, I'm just very thankful that I've had the opportunity and the, the flexibility to, to move around and to try um, working at these different are these different institutions, and I've met a lot of uh, great friends, coworkers, students throughout the years. So it's it's been a, a really fun ride over the last fifteen years. All right, thank you, Doctor Bet. Now we're going to ask one more question, and then we're going to go to some comments and a question in the chat. So it's your turn, um, Jerry. All right, Doctor Bet. Pertaining to Wake Tech, can you describe departments associated with arts, humanities, and social sciences? Sure. So we're a we're a large division, um, and I'll start by saying arts, humanities, and social sciences. Our division we offer two degree programs: um, the associate in arts and the associate in fine arts. And these two degrees provide a solid general education foundation for students who are pursuing a bachelor's degree in a wide variety of disciplines. And uh, some of those areas are anthropology. Um, it could be art, business, history, humanities. Uh, there are many, many, many more. But what our, what our um, division does, it provides students with uh, professional pro uh, programs or prepares students for professional programs requiring a, requiring a liberal arts background. And we've got a few um, departments within our division. The first is um, that I'll discuss is communication and theater which we teach classes that relate to communication, um, public speaking, storytelling, acting. Um, we also have English, which uh, offers classics in composition, um, American and British literature, uh, just to name a few. We also have foreign language and fine arts, um, which focus on like art appreciation, um, art survey courses, and also various uh, um, 
um, specific courses uh, for majors that focus on like sculpturing, painting, printmaking, computer art. Um, and then our music program, we offer classes such as music appreciation, intro to jazz. Um, there's options such as chorus are also available as electives. A couple of other um, departments, humanities, um, that's your history courses, humanities, philosophy, um, political science, religion, to name a few. Social sciences would focus like on courses such as anthropology, psychology, sociology. And then we recently um, um, started working with academic foundations, which focuses on pre-curriculum uh, math and English and English as a foreign language. So we offer um, a lot of classes. We have a lot of opportunities for students to be engaged, not only in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom. And, and that's really the beauty of having a liberal arts education. You're exposed to so many disciplines, so many topics, you have the opportunity to participate in so many events and activities, whether it's on campus or through virtual meetings, that students are really provided with this well-rounded education where they kind of get the best of, of everything, right? You're, you're learning a little bit about history. You're learning a little bit about music. You're learning a little bit about people through sociology. And I just think a liberal arts education provides um, a lot of skills that many degrees maybe don't, such as like critical thinking and you know learning how to write well, as I mentioned earlier. So we really have um, robust programs and classes that really help get students prepared for that, um, for whether it's for career right uh, readiness or also whether they decide to transfer to a four-year college or a university. So. Um, we do a lot in the classrooms, and I'll be happy if you'd like to talk a little bit more about some of the things we offer outside of the classroom, if, you, if we have time. All right. All right, Cameron, you're back. I was thinking you were gone. Um, we got a question and a comment, if you don't mind reading those for us. And this is from Robert Fleming, who is in transitional math. Transitional math and English, I think he works with both. Okay. Um, cultural literacy and cultural, uh, cultural, uh, culture literacy and culture awareness is important in higher education. Totally agree. Next. Dr. Beck, congratulations on pursuing history since that was one of my um, challenging courses in college. How diverse was your history of study culturally and internationally? So, yeah, go ahead. we had a very, di a very diverse program um, at the undergrad level. You know, you had to take we had to take um, uh, multiple history courses. Um, my my focus area was African American history, um, so it took a lot of courses uh, pertaining to um, what other some other areas such as well as I mentioned African American history. Took the history of jazz, uh, military history. Um, I believe it, Civil War history was in there. Um, I'm trying European history was in there. I took a couple of those. Um, uh, I think maybe uh, was it Japanese or Asian history? I can't remember the exact title of that particular course, but but we basically hit up all parts of the world. So it, it kind of gave us a better a better understanding or a better idea of like a worldview of uh, cultures and history and civilizations um, across across the globe. So that was really great. And my master's degree in history uh, did uh, primarily focused on African-American history as well. Um, and um, and that was an amazing an, ex an amazing experience. My my um, major was officially American history um, with with a with a focus on African-American history. So uh, I think the only other option at that time was Latin American history and just decided to go the uh, American history route. But again, taking a lot of classes that focused on um, diplomacy and relations with other parts of uh, our, our countries or nations across the world. Uh, reading a lot of primary sources from around the world um, and just kind of getting a better understanding of, of how um, America views the world and how the world views America and how those kind of blend and mesh together. So again, very diverse programs, um, very great experience. And just, I think it's made me more aware of, um, uh, of how the world is um, similar in a lot of ways, but also different. But I've learned to appreciate and respect those differences and um, appreciate different cultures. And, and um, you know, it's just it's just amazing that 
Um, there's so many different types of opportunities across the globe where you can participate in events or, or travel um, and get to know more about ancient civilizations or current civilizations and people. And, and you can learn from, from others, right? So, um, you know, it's easy to, for me, growing up in North Carolina and rural North Carolina and being isolated and not doing a lot of traveling and just kind of um, having my own um, uh, worldview. But then again, when you're exposed to different cultures and different people and different civilizations, it really opens your mind and helps you appreciate and respect um, differences. And that's one of the things that I, I gained from, from, my, from my education and from my experiences that you learn to appreciate the beauty um, of the world and the people of the world. And um, we can always learn from each other and grow from each other. And, and um, we always have input and things to say and share, but sometimes it's nice just to sit back, re relax, be quiet and listen and learn from others. All right, thank you. Y'all keep seeing me move my lights automatically go on, off and on. <laughs> so we're gonna um, go back to some more slides and then we have another question in chat. And then we're going to, um, if we have the time, we're going to play a little of uh, the ending. And this is Laura Bethay, who um, works with diversity. I, I always get her title wrong, but she works with diversity, inclusion, uh, Title IX, and she works with the Office of Career and Employment Resources. And she came to us virtually. And so thank you, um, um, Jerry, for bringing her in. So we appreciate her uh, addressing the students and talking staff. All right, next slide. And this is Freddie Green, your jazz man, and his uh, jazz trio. But the guy on the further with the harp he played, and at the end, they all played together. And I think y'all enjoy that, as well as the violinist. Next. And these young ladies, they showed us how they wear their dresses in their uh, Latin American countries. And it was wonderful. I enjoyed that. And Dr. Beck, you see he's got the front row seat. He's right there. Next. <laughs> And these two guys, they played uh, a song from Venezuela, uh, two songs. They were very, very, very good. There's uh, Jerry way back there, but he was running all the technology associated with the room. But Sarah was doing the live stream, so we thank her. Next, and this is Dr. Arwen Smallwood from North Carolina a t State University. He is the chairman of history and political science at a t And he came to do a shout out like um, Dr. Beck just did the federal state. He did that for a t inviting students to consider transferring. And a t is the number one public HBCU in the United States. So that's important. So now we're going to go back and get these questions. And then we're going to end it with um, a musical performance a little bit. They did a jam session. So if you can put the question up, Sarah, or comment. Okay. Cameron? Yes. This um, is from Josie George. I loved your story about wanting to major in music, but the talent wasn't there. Do you consider students who want to major in subjects that they are not cut out to do? And how do you respond? That's a great question. And, you know, I never want to be the individual that crushes someone's dream. So I'm always very, um, uh, I always try to take a uh, soft approach <laughs> to those conversations. Um, but I do like to ask, the, I try to ask the right question. So, you know, if someone wanted to major in music, I'd probably ask the same thing. You know, what are your music talents? You know, what, which instruments do you play? And then I'd probably have the honest conversation of saying, you know, if you don't have that background, this might be a difficult journey. And, you know, are there, are there any other tracks that uh, you might want to consider? So I have had those conversations in the past um, with students. Again, they're very delicate. I don't want to be the one that, again, kind of crushes dreams. So I never try to persuade a student to to shift patterns or, or but I do provide them with options and I do try to be as honest as possible so that they have all the facts before they make their decision. So. I mean, I guess even for me, if I wanted to make a major in music, I, I probably could have. It would have been a struggle. Right. So but that doesn't mean that I would have failed. We just don't know. So, again, I think it's just about getting all the necessary information out there on the table and then letting students make the best informed decision they can with the information that is provided. That's a great question. Yeah. Do we have any more questions or comments? All right. If not, we're getting ready to end in a little teeny bit. So, um, Dr. Beck, it was great meeting you, and I love what you're planning on doing with your, um, I would say, 
diversity and inclusion within your courses. I thought that was interesting. So I'm going to let you kind of give us your final thoughts. I'm going to have you come back because, you know, we couldn't get as much in as we needed. And also, even though all these students that are here are majoring in something that is technical, everybody has to take classes in, in your division. So I, I thank you for giving us that um, new innovation. And I know it's not complete, but I know you're working on it and I appreciate it. I'm sure students will. You want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. Just uh, very, very briefly, I will just say that we do have a lot going on in our division. Um, we're actually working on um, developing a culturally responsive uh, teaching committee, um, which basically, and, and Dr. Barry Malone will be, will be heading this up, but culturally responsive teaching is a pedagogy that really recognizes the importance of including students' cultural references in all aspects of learning. So we're looking at ways to um, make sure our curriculums are culturally responsive and they can, and um, we want to make sure that we touch all students and, um, and we want to make sure that students are able to interact and be engaged in, in all of our courses that we offer. But we offer a lot of activities such as our uh, lecture series. Uh, we bring in uh, guests from different backgrounds to visit and speak with our students. Um, we participate with the Full Frame Festival. Um, uh, you know, uh, we have speak series where we bring in partners from other institutions such as NC State to focus on areas such as storytelling. I mean, we we are adding more classes uh, to offer, um, uh, to provide students with more diverse offerings of classes. For example, we just added back African American history to our catalog for the upcoming year. Uh, that's just one and also digital photography. So we're just trying to offer a couple of different options there. Um, uh, we offer many, many activities. Another activity, for example, is Promise Day, um, which focuses on the prevention of domestic violence. We've had guest speakers in the past um, from national from the National Coalition for the Prevention of uh, Domestic Violence um, to provide workshops and learning opportunities for students regarding domestic violence. Um, so we're always trying to bring in speakers to speak on relevant topics from various diverse backgrounds who can um, really reach and touch our students and have an impact. Um, and one more thing that we do, and I'll say that now, I'll, I'll cut it short, is we also participate and have faculty who participate in study abroad classes and travel abroad. So not only do we um, talk about diversity and cultures and people around the world um, in our classrooms, not only do we offer events and bring in speakers to, to discuss the importance of multiculturalism and uh, but we also um, have opportunities for students to travel and learn in other countries or just to travel and visit in other countries. So um, we really have a lot of great opportunities for students. So we really kind of um, want to make sure students have the opportunities to learn, but also to participate and to be engaged within the learning experience. So we're really pleased with the progress we're making as a division. We've got a lot of fantastic faculty staff. Our department has just wonderful um, so yeah, we're just really excited about some of the changes we're making and we're excited about the impact this is going to have on student success as we move move forward into future uh, semesters. All right. And and we're just going over a little bit, but that is fine. And as I said, we're going to have you come back and we have some comments for you. And okay. so um, I'm going to let y'all, so we'll let Jerry do this one from Josie George. Thank you, Dr. Bate. Great conversation. Uh, All right. And she did too, but she, you won't get to do it twice. So next, <laughs> David, you get to read this one. Uh, it says, by the way, Jerry, Cameron, and David, you did such a wonderful job. Great session. Uh, thank you, Josie. I would echo, these are great success coach outreach ambassadors, and I love engaging students that I work with and getting them. Really, David is an example only because he's the only one of you that graduated but he became a student senator. He was involved in math club, the chess club. I don't want the students to be tethered to me just because I'm one of the first persons they meet. I want them to get out into the campus and become student leaders and leaders wherever they go. But we're gonna end it with, um, you wanna say something, uh, Mike Beck, because you were the guest and we want you to have the final word and then we're gonna go with some final um, jazz improvisation. Okay. All right. Well, Michael, I just want to say again, thank you for the invitation to your show. It's been a great experience. Jerry, Cameron, David, again, 
Um, it's a pleasure to speak with, with each of you. And again, you've done an awesome job and, I don't, and you made this seamless and easy for me. So thank you gentlemen for that. Um, I just want to say to the folks who are listening, um, we hope that you'll consider Wake Tech as your school of choice. If you're not already attending here, we offer great programs and we would love to see you um, in our um, associate in arts program or associate in fine arts program. We've got some of the best faculty and staff, um, in my opinion, across the um, uh, throughout the nation. So um, I don't, I can't think of a better place to attend. Um, so again, thanks to everyone. Uh, Michael, I do appreciate your time and I consider this an honor. So thank you. Thank you. And Sarah, can you give us a little music as we leave for today? And I know that we, we got her in the background doing so much, but I think she can find it. Appreciate it. And this is the closing at the um, mixer. And I know I'm talking over them, but they had never played together before. They just, good musicians are great musicians. And the guy with the braids works in events that way tech, by the way. I guess we all can say goodbye. <laughs> we'll see y'all next month on uh, August the 28th. And we'll have the Dean of Library Services. It was nice meeting you, uh, Mr. Beck. You as well. Thanks, yeah. gentlemen. I believe... Um, I just wanted to say, um, I believe I was sitting behind you, uh, Mr. Beck. I think we were at the same table, table three. Oh, okay, yes. yeah. Yeah, I just now realized that oh, <laughs> when I was looking yeah. at the pictures. But, uh, how about that? Yeah, I, I do recognize it now that you mentioned it. <laughs> yeah, and Josie Jordan was at your table too, who made comments. Oh, yeah, I don't okay. think she's, nice. did she sit next to you? She might have sat right next to you. I believe she was, yeah, I think, yeah, I believe so to the to my left, actually. Yes. And and Freddie Green, we didn't show this yet, but uh, we're going to try to get the um, links for the show so that people can look at the, the, the concert, as you said, because Freddie Green played to your table in the end, he really showed out. <laughs> yeah, he did. <laughs> that was a lot of fun. <laughs>